Welcome to Methodist Hill Quilt Studio. I'm Joyce Lundrigan. This is the first in what will be a series of videos I'm calling the MHQS Combine and Design series. By using basic patterns creatively, you can grow your pattern library. This first video addresses wide borders, but easily could be scaled down for smaller ones. The techniques would be the same. Here is a picture of a customer quilt using the technique that I'll be showing you to fill a wide open 12 inch border. You know the ones where someone needs to make the quilt just a little bit bigger. There aren't that many big patterns for borders and corners. There is a solution. Here is a layout using the technique that I'll be showing you to make these borders. It looks as though we've got blocks on point with triangles, and it's not nearly that complicated. It's a lot of fun. The technique requires using two different point-to-point -point triangles. While it can be done with just one, it is more interesting when designed using two. You use the CAD, so we'll turn grid on and draw a pattern. And after drawing the patterns, then we'll save them to our database. The contrast created by using a texture-like pattern, like a crosshatch pattern, or this curved crosshatch pattern, breaks up the monotony of a single pattern and provides visual contrast. So let's see how this works. I'm going to select this MD just saying triangle pattern in my project tab and then click on draw pattern. Snaps are on and I'm going to click the corners in a counterclockwise direction in a grid square and end again back in the lower right. Right click and then right click again to exit draw. Now if I turn on our flags and I'm going to toggle these patterns as sewn, then you can see it starts and ends in this bottom right corner which would make it work for a corner pattern. But if I do a virtual stitch out, then you'll see it stitches in the same direction that we clicked. But a corner pattern would generally be expected to stitch in the opposite direction. So I'll escape from virtual stitch out, and I'm going to select this triangle here on the bottom and reverse the start and end because it stitches from left to right at this point. Let's reverse start and end and then do a order join. And now if I do a virtual stitch out, which is F2, then it stitches in the direction that I would expect. So with that pattern created, which is a now a 12 inch corner pattern, I'm going to select it, right click, and go down to the bottom of the right click menu and save pattern. And I'll call this the MD just saying corner. It's not point to point. It's a corner. It can also be used as a block. And then I will save and close. Now to get the border repeat, we're going to select this base triangle again and press delete on our keyboard. And you'll see it starts on the left, ends on the right. And yes, we have a missing piece, but it's point to point. And so it will work as a border pattern. So select that right click, save pattern, and now I'll say just saying border. And it is point to point, it is a border, and so then I can save and close. Now I have a corner pattern and a border repeat. So I'm going to select 
the corner pattern first, hold control key down, select the border repeat and click on border corner. And now I'm going to click out the borders as prompted by the prompts in the box. Enter a length, I'll say 72 inches. And I can say OK to close the setup. So we have the first part of the border set up. And we would stitch this first. And then we would come back by selecting a contrast pattern like this curvy crosshatch. And with our machine head, we would click at these points along the quilt top to fill in the contrasting triangle. We're doing this in SAM, so I will click on Draw Pattern and click across to fill in. This technique is a two-step process to get your outer framework, so to speak, with your first triangle and then come back with the machine head and click the points on your quilt top to fill in the second contrasting pattern. And of course, you would use your crosshairs to make sure that you're lined up at these points. Look how quick and simple that is, and it looks so very complicated. Let's do a second one. So we'll go back to this first quilt group where we did this, and I will delete that pattern. And this time, let's take this MD Curl Curl. This is one of my modular patterns that's been combined. And click on Draw Pattern. And as before, we'll click in a counterclockwise direction. And then we can select the base triangle and do a reverse start end. And then select that same pattern again and do an order join. Right click, save pattern, save and close, and then delete that base triangle and select the balance and save pattern, select border, save and close. And now we have a second. I think this is a great solution for these big wide borders we get sometimes and aren't sure what to do. And especially pretty if it's a plain fabric and you want to show off the quilting. This technique will work for smaller borders as well. So if you have a six inch border and want to try this same technique, it works for that as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gives you ideas and ways for you to, to solve border problems and also to create new patterns for your database. Have fun designing and combining.